In an interview with Al Jazeera, which was monitored by the New Africa Channel, President Paul Kagame of Rwanda discussed a range of key points that shed light on his perspective on leadership, Rwanda's progress, ethnic tensions, the effectiveness of the African Union, Western influence in Africa, United Nations peacekeeping, and women in leadership roles. Additionally, President Kagame addressed the issue of coups in Africa and the concept of neocolonialism. President Kagame has been in power for 23 years and a constitutional change allows for an additional 10 years. He emphasized that his leadership reflects choices made by various sections of the Rwandan population, not just an individual's tenure. Rwandans, in his view, are capable of making decisions and taking responsibility for their country. Kagame, president of Rwanda, thanks so much for talking to Al Jazeera. You're welcome. You've been president of Rwanda for 23 years now, and the constitution has been changed, so you can be in place for another 10 years. And as history has shown us that that individuals who are often in leadership for that long a period of time, sometimes it doesn't end well. How do you see the story of Rwanda proceeding after your leadership? Well, first of all, it's not just the individual that is being elected or that is there for those years. It's also a question of those who enable that person to be there for all that time. So it's an interaction of uh, choices to make by various sections of our population. It's also, of course, uh, a responsibility of the individual like me. But um, Rwandans are not just uh, uh, lesser human beings, as one may think, when they are making that judgment. I think Rwandans are as able to do uh, things and make decisions as they find fit. So that's how I happen to be there. And uh, we have made investments as a country in our people and uh, at the right time. Rwanda, a country that has made significant progress in education, technology, healthcare, and security since the 1994 genocide, strives for stability, freedom, coexistence, and economic development. Kagame acknowledged the history of ethnic tensions in Rwanda, including distinctions created during colonial rule. He stressed the importance of addressing these issues and avoiding external influence on ethnic divisions. Many things in our country are happening just uh, naturally. They take their own course, but of course they build on uh, a number of factors. What is clear is that uh, our society actually did disintegrate uh, in 1994, or even starting a few years before that. But when you had the genocide, uh, the society almost uh, uh, came to a halt and non-existent. So thereafter, we've been building from scratch, people have been coming together, and um, some of these things uh, are happening out of necessity. When you see the unit of the country that we've been building after that disintegration, if you see the individual roles played uh, across the society, the understanding of everybody's responsibility and uh, having actually ambitions, uh, beyond uh, what anyone could have imagined. They come from simply saying, we sunk solo and uh, that's not where we should have been in the first place, but we are human beings capable as anybody else and we should do something for ourselves. Uh, and in any case, this cannot be addressed by anyone outside of Rwanda. People outside can contribute, but they cannot uh, substitute for Rwandans in addressing a uh, very complex problems. President Kagame's perspective on the recurring trend of coups in Africa is striking. He firmly believes that these coups are not mere coincidences, but rather a result of the world's failure to learn from history. 
He questions why the international community doesn't recognize that these coups are occurring for a reason and asserts that Africa's richness in resources and human capital should lead to prosperity, not instability. Kagame's critique extends beyond African nations themselves. He also challenges powerful external actors, such as Western countries, who have long been present on the continent and benefited from its resources while African nations often remain impoverished. His message underscores the need for a more equitable and self-determined future for Africa. Regarding Western influence in Africa, Kagame called for African nations to assert themselves and not remain victims of foreign influence. He criticized neo-colonialism and questioned why African countries, rich in resources, remained impoverished while external powers benefited. For me, it's very simple. And, uh, well, it stems from the fact that the world doesn't learn lessons. As you see, people don't even learn lessons about what happened in our country. What is happening across the countries where coups have been taking place, people should be asking themselves, are these coups just happening, or they're happening for a reason? And that is something that maybe has been ignored in the past for many years and hasn't been addressed. And that is really, what do you do for the development of these societies in these countries? Uh, you, and, and people have come to take it for granted mm. uh, that Africa is poor and therefore it must remain as such which is not true because Africa is actually very rich, both in terms of natural resources, human capital, you can name it. I don't think there's any geographical space in this world that is so endowed with such uh, things uh, to build on uh, as Africa. But in the end, it comes down to governance. How, how is Africa governed? How do countries govern themselves? And how, if they are doing that, are putting their people at the center of everything that is being done? So in the end, when you see a coup happening and uh, ordinary people move onto the street and are happy, are jubilating because of that, uh, it tells you something. It's not just a coup that people should look at and say, well, this is the beginning, this is the end. There is that story behind. But there is another question that must be raised. All of these, for example, developed countries who are heavily present in every country on our continent, doing all kinds of things, teaching people democracy, human rights, freedoms. Then uh, in the end, uh, uh, exploiting natural resources of the continent, making a lot of money, whether it is through companies or whatever is taking place. Sometimes countries, you know, are playing their part directly in this exploitation of these natural resources that should have brought wealth to our countries. Uh, so one would ask, so why, why are you there for 50 years and you are doing all kinds of things, business, all kinds of transactions? For you, you get better for it, but the people of countries where you are doing it remain impoverished, if not even getting worse. So this is a question that... Is that to the must... French? Is that to the Belgians? Is that Have, to the Americans? Uh, is it the Chinese? All over there. Absolutely. Why? Why Why would you be doing so? things worth billions, tens of billions of dollars? Do you dollars? think there's a kind of neo-colonialism going on now in Africa? I think there is just total confusion from the beginning. I think colonialism never ended, really. It just changed the forms, and, but, but I can't also blame others mm. just for it. I, I think we need to take responsibility ourselves as Africans. We, 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 why do we accept such a things to happen? Why do we have almost everything 
and that works to benefit others more than we benefit from them. There the, are the, the different ways of correcting that. Why don't we do that? Uh, so, I mean, sometimes you, you may ex complain or you may blame the exploiter, but uh, even the exploited should be blamed. Kagami also addressed Rwanda's involvement in UN peacekeeping operations, noting that the UN operates under the influence of powerful countries. He believes that lessons learned from Rwanda's experience can be applied to prevent conflicts. Kagami also discussed the challenges facing the African Union and pointed out that it reflects the issues within individual member countries. He highlighted the need to reform both the African Union and regional economic communities to enhance Africa's governance and development. Well, the African Union is not uh, more effective simply because the countries that make up this African Union ourselves we have a problem. African Union becomes a reflection of the country's uh, problems uh, as we see every day in each country. Are other new organizations like ECOWAS making the AU less relevant? Not really, because ECOWAS was supposed to be, is a, a regional economic uh, entity. So it, it really doesn't make it uh, irrelevant. It only say maybe reflect the problems that uh, go across the continent. Therefore, as we want to reform the African Union, we also need to be thinking of how do we reform these economic communities, mm. because these constitute uh, a smaller number of countries, you may say seven, ten, or doesn't matter the number, adding to 55. Right. It was a simpler way of saying if we reform the regional economic communities and their functioning well, then it makes it easier for the African Union, the central body that governs the continent, to do better. In a powerful statement, President Kagame stresses that Africa cannot perpetually remain in the position of victims. He underlines the urgency of Africa asserting itself on the global stage, asserting its own agency, and determining its own destiny. Kagame's message resonates with a call for Africans to move beyond the narrative of being victims of historical injustices and external influence. Instead, he advocates for proactive engagement, self-reliance, and empowerment, emphasizing that Africa possesses the resources and potential to chart its path toward a brighter future. Well, this is the question I think we have partly answered. Um, there is going to be Western influence, or there's going to be some other influence. Mm. Uh, but it's going to be minus African influence. Mm -hmm. so, that, so meaning... So it's a zero sum. So th this is what it looks like, mm. uh, or sounds like, because other people have influence, Africa doesn't have influence, so that means Africa is just there to be influenced by, and then, of course, the fights that go on over the continent, for, very obviously, for what the continent has. I think my take on that is it should challenge us African leaders and Africans generally. Mm. We can't permanently stay in this uh, position of a victim. Uh, in the end, by the way, who, when those powers that have influence, whenever they want, they turn Africa into perpetrators. So on one hand, we're either victims or we are pointed to as perpetrators of different crimes, things like that. So, after hearing President Paul Kagame's insightful perspective on Africa's challenges and the need to move beyond a victim position, what are your thoughts? Do you agree with his views on self-reliance and empowerment for the continent? We'd love to hear your opinions in the comments section below. And as always, make sure to subscribe to the New Africa channel for more thought-provoking content and exciting future videos.